What's up guys, this is Matt Day from The Film Show, and in today's episode I'm going to be showing you guys my darkroom setup. I get a lot of emails and questions from people asking what all they need to do to get a darkroom set up at home. Most people assume that it's going to take a lot of money and time to set up a darkroom at home, but I'm going to show you guys my setup and just how simple it is. So for starters, my darkroom is in a spare bathroom that was added onto our house. Um, to make a long story short, about 10 years ago, my brother was in an accident that paralyzed him from the chest down. So we needed a bathroom here in the house that was handicap accessible for him. So they added on this bathroom and now my family lives in a different house and I have the house that I grew up in. So with this being an additional bathroom that really wasn't being used anymore, I decided it would make a good room for a designated dark room. That way I wouldn't have to worry about taking everything out whenever you know I wasn't printing and then putting everything back in and setting everything up every time I wanted to print. This way it's all perfectly set up, it's ready to go at any time, and it stays out of the way in the other bathrooms. So to go over the setup over here, uh, this cabinet, and I'll give you guys a better view in just a minute, but this cabinet was left over and I brought it in here to store all of my chemicals and paper, stuff like that. And then this countertop here was also left over, so I brought that in here and set it up on the wall so that way I had plenty of workspace and somewhere to set the enlarger. So the enlarger here, it's a Bessler 45MX. It'll do everything from 35 millimeter to medium format and four x five. You're gonna need a different lens and a different negative carrier for each size, but I do have the 35 millimeter uh, lens and negative carrier that I need, which is a 50 millimeter lens. And I also have an 80 millimeter uh, lens to do medium format and a 6x6 carrier. So with my setup, I can print 35 millimeter and 6x6 uh, medium format film. I don't have the lens or the carrier to do large format, but I haven't shot large format in a long time, so it's really not a big deal. Enlarger timer that I use is the Grey Lab 450. I have that hooked up to the enlarger so that way I can time all of my exposures. Other things that I have here, I have some air duster that I use to dust off the negatives grain focuser here that I use to make sure all the photos are in sharp focus. I have an easel here to do uh, up to 11 by 14 prints on this easel. Um, this easel here is an 8 by 10 full frame easel. I find myself using that more than anything. I print a lot of 8 by 10s, good size to send off to friends and stuff like that. So constantly using this easel here. Over here I've got just a binder full of negatives. Um, I don't keep all of my negatives in here but I was printing earlier so this is uh, my binder for this year so far. On the bulletin board I use to keep things like any notes that I might take for developing film, dilutions, temperature times, stuff like that. It's you know handy to have right there so that way I don't have to look it up or you know try and remember all the different times for all the different temperatures. My iPad here, I'm usually watching Netflix whenever I'm developing film, but whenever I'm printing I usually just close it up and set it underneath my binder and put Spotify on or something like that to listen to some music. Over here is my Grey Lab timer that I use whenever I'm printing. I usually just set it to an hour and uh, keep an eye on it whenever I'm processing the prints and then every time that hour is up I just restart it. One of my safe lights up here on this wall but I do use more than one and I'll show you guys the rest of those in a minute. My notebook here, this is great to keep uh, all of my exposure times for any prints that I make. That way if I want to make an additional print of something I already know the exposure and all of that, so this is really handy to have in the dark room so that way you don't have to mess with more test strips and all of that. Everything is uh, always recorded in here, so that always comes in handy. Now I will show you guys my cabinets here. So down here in the cabinets, this is where I keep all of my chemicals. You can see I've got my TF4 fixer for the paper, and I also have some for film that I use. A uh, jug of Dectol mixed up there. Over here we've got developing tanks and my cylinders, my funnels, squeegee, all of that stuff. And in the back there's also just some spare chemicals, stuff like that. In case I run out, I have some uh, here that I can mix up. Um, in these drawers here, I've basically got some more paper, uh, some film clips, my medium format lens for the enlarger, an extra safe bulb that I use above the sink, um, my 6x6 carrier, and in this drawer over here, I've got some different paper sizes. I'm pretty much always using the Ilford Multigrade 4 RC paper. I use the pearl finish. 
I'm not a big fan of glossy and I'm not a big fan of matte paper, but um, the pearl seems to be a nice in-between for those. And over there you can see the toilet that was once in use here in the bathroom, but now my enlarger sits over it, so that's there. Um, over here on this side, you can't really see it, but then I got a trash can to throw out things like test strips that I don't need, paper towels, stuff like that, just to make sure I don't leave any messes here. And now I will show you guys where I process all the prints. So like I said before, this is a handicap accessible bathroom. So the shower here is completely open. So what I did was I took this metal rack right here and I set this up directly in the shower. That way I have room to set up all of my trays for processing. But if anything spills, it's not going to be on the floor or on a countertop or anything like that. It's going to go right down the drain. Whenever I'm developing film, I've also got a rack down here at the bottom that I can set all of the tanks and the reels and stuff like that. After I rinse it off, it's all gonna dry right there and I don't have to worry about it dripping all over the floor or the countertop or anything like that. Once again, it's all going down the drain. So up above here, I've got a wire hooked up that I hang all of my prints from to dry. And also whenever I'm developing film, I hang the film up right here and it's kind of out of the way. I can clean up the rest of the dark room whenever I'm done and the prints are hanging up here to dry. Over here on this side, you'll see I've got another safe light set up. Having the two on each side here, it makes it easy to see everything in the dark room whenever those are the only lights on, but it's not too much light to where it's gonna fog any of the paper. So that's basically the whole setup for all the processing side, the wet side of the dark room. And now I'll show you the door and how I uh, make sure that no light comes through there. Okay, so to make sure you don't have light coming into your dark room, what I did here was I went to Lowe's and got a roll of this stuff. It's a foam-like material with a vinyl backing, and then the other side was an adhesive backing. So basically, I just took that and cut it to size all around the door frame, and that just makes sure that no light gets through the crack there. Um, there were a couple cracks here in the trim where you could see a tiny bit of light, so I just took gaffer's tape and covered that up. It doesn't look pretty, but it's more about function than anything. So that gets the job done to keep the light out around the frame. Along the bottom there, um, some light can creep in. Some people usually just take a towel or something and kind of stuff it around the door. I got one of those things that slides underneath the door to keep out like cool drafts in the winter. Um, that thing works great for keeping the light out. So anything like that around the bottom, just to make sure no light is going to slowly leak in. If you've got windows in the space where you're wanting to set up a dark room, you're going to want to make sure to cover those up as well. Any kind of uh, black plastic or anything like that, maybe even just a trash bag, if you want to put that over the window and make sure you tape off all the sides so no light gets through, that'll get the job done as well. So as long as you've got all the creases and all the cracks and everything where light could get through, as long as that's covered up, you'll be good to go. So now I'll just kind of show you where I wash my prints and stuff like that. When it comes to washing the print, what a lot of people do is they either buy a print washer or they make a print washer. But what I do here at home is I just use the faucet here. I'll just grab uh, one of the trays and put the print in there after it's out of the fixer. And then I'll just run some water over it, kind of agitate it back and forth, and then just dump the water and repeat that over and over until I think it's gotten a good wash. Um, I've never had any issues with stuff like that, so that's always worked for me. So that basically sums everything up as far as how my dark room is set up. Um, it's a pretty simple workflow. I start here and then I move over to the processing and then I come over here to wash and then I hang it up to dry. So you want to make sure you have uh, basically a dry side and a wet side. That way you don't have you know your notebooks or your negatives right next to your trays full of chemicals. So having an organized dark room um, that's definitely essential, just like any workspace. You wanna make it organized and you wanna make sure that you have thought everything out and you know that there's some sort of rhythm to it and some sort of direction to work. So hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them the best that I can. And uh, that's basically it. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.